Hello everyone. Today on ABC 7 News at noon, Maine Republicans are vowing to fight after former President Donald Trump was disqualified from appearing on Maine's ballot. We'll have the story. Also, the search continues for a man accused of murdering a person in Waterville and a Bangor organization is seeking a partner in order to keep the Hope House open. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Craig Colson. We'll have those stories and much more coming up. I'm sitting in today for Susan Farley. We hope you're having a nice Friday out there. It is finally Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. Uh, let's talk about the weather to see what we can expect as we head into the weekend. In fact, we have a live picture coming from Greenville Junction at this hour. We have a storm system kind of bringing drizzle here to the Bangor area today up around Greenville and in some other locations. Locations, they're seeing more of an icy mix. Uh, if you watch closely, you might even see a few snowflakes falling there in Greenville at this hour. It looks like we'll see more of the same as we head into the evening. You'll certainly want to take it easy as you head out as um, temperatures drop later on. Right now, they're above freezing in the Bangor area, but once you get down along the line of freezing in some locations this afternoon, you could find some very slippery driving conditions. For more on what we can expect tonight into tomorrow, let's turn things over to Devin Biggs. Alrighty, happy Friday afternoon, the final Friday of 2023, and it's been an active one out there. We had a winter weather advisory that was up until 10 a.m. this morning. That's out of here now, and this afternoon, we just have that small crowd advisory we have our eye on, too, until midnight as we head towards Saturday morning. Now, the visibility levels are helping to indicate that we are starting to see that switch over to a little bit of snow across the region, so that's helping to reduce visibilities in some spots after we had a little bit of freezing rain in some areas this morning. As we move forward, though, here's the radar right here that's been showing that freezing rain and even some fog possibly developing in some spots as well. But we're going to start working on switching this winchy mix of our freezing rain and regular rain and snow. They're pretty much all snow. It hasn't happened just yet, but it will be later on today and especially overnight tonight. But the bigger picture shows that we have the excitement going on in our neck of the woods right now with a winchy mix, a, a pretty much a winchy mess that's taking place at this point. But future gas moving forward will switch over the snow later today. Maybe a few breaks in the precipitation too, but notice by tonight and tomorrow, more snow and a little bit of rain will be moving on in. So for the rest of today, we'll say middle 30s, rain, freezing rain, sleet and snow on the way. And that north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Overnight tonight, here we go. We have lower 30s. Some more rain and snow will be on the way. Maybe some breaks as well. But that east breeze only getting up to about 5 miles per hour. As we move ahead towards tomorrow, we have upper 30s, some more rain and snow on the way. That northwest breeze getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period, a wintry mix on the way. Temperatures in the 30s. You'll full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you very much, Devin. The good news is it looks like this stormy weather will move out in time for New Year's Eve. We'll have more on that coming up. Well, meanwhile, Maine is in the national spotlight today. While former President Donald Trump is still the current front runner for the Republican presidential nomination next year, he will not be on the primary ballot here in the state of Maine. That after Secretary of State Shanna Bellows issued a ruling disqualifying Trump from appearing on the ballot. Fox News' Kevin Utreski takes a look at the escalating legal drama and why a growing number of states are saying Trump is not eligible to serve in 2024. Former President Donald Trump facing another roadblock in his bid for the White House. This after Maine Secretary of State Shenna Bellows removed Trump from the state's 2024 presidential primary ballot on Thursday. Bellows ultimately put her decision on pause in the wake of an appeal from the Trump campaign but says her verdict was reached after hearing challenges from Maine residents and former lawmakers regarding Trump's eligibility to be on the ballot. It's a very detailed decision. Uh, we lay out uh, why under Maine law, the Secretary of State has the authority, indeed the obligation, I'm duty bound to make this determination. Bellow says Trump's role in the January 6th riot on the Capitol violated Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which prevents people from holding government positions if they engaged in insurrection. Mr. Trump engaged in insurrection and therefore was disqualified. A Trump campaign spokesman says Bellow's decision will suspend the civil rights of voters. GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy also coming to Trump's defense, writing in part, quote, I stand by my prior pledge to withdraw from any state's ballot that ultimately removes Trump from its ballot. I call on DeSantis, Christie, and Haley to do the same or else they are tacitly endorsing this illegal and brazen election interference. This all comes after the Colorado Supreme Court decided this month to remove Trump from its primary ballot, also citing Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. But that ruling was also paused after an appeal from the Colorado GOP was filed with the U.S. Supreme Court. Kevin Uretsky, 
Fox News. Well, minutes after the Secretary of State released her decision, the Trump campaign sent out a response. A spokesperson for the campaign said in part, quote, the main Secretary of State is a former ACLU attorney, a virulent leftist and a hyper-partisan Biden supporting Democrat who has decided to interfere in the presidential election on behalf of crooked Joe Biden. We are witnessing in real time the attempted theft of an election and the disenfranchisement of the American voter. We will quickly file a legal objection in state court to prevent this atrocious decision in Maine from taking effect. And President Trump will never stop fighting to make America great again, end quote. Some Maine Republicans also saying they are going to seek the impeachment of Shanna Bellos, too. We will certainly keep you updated on that fight. It's going to be a long one, it sounds like. Uh, moving on now to other news. A manhunt is still underway this noon for a suspect wanted for a Waterville murder case. An employee at Damon's Beverage on Jefferson Street was found dead by a co-worker on Thursday morning. Police are now looking for another co-worker who has been named a suspect in that person's death. A murder warrant has been issued for 20-year-old Spirital Hubiak of Waterville. Hubiak is believed to be operating a black 2010 Ford Taurus bearing the main license plate number 4666ZR. Investigators believe Hubiak has left the state of Maine and efforts to locate him are ongoing. Police say if you do see the suspect, do not approach him and either contact the Maine State Police or your local police department. The unidentified victim's body was taken to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Maine State Police, meanwhile, are also investigating the deaths of a mother and daughter in Farmington. At around 1045 on Wednesday morning, officers responded to the positive dog kennel on the Red Schoolhouse Road in Farmington following a 911 call. Police say they found two people dead inside that business. Autopsies have been performed, but the cause and manner of death are not being released at this time. However, the two individuals have been identified as 76-year-old Gene Robinson of Farmington and 53-year-old Allison Cumming of Farmington. Police say the mother and daughter lived on the property in a separate building. If anyone has any information regarding this incident, you're urged to contact the Farmington Police Department. Police are also investigating a number of deadly accidents that have happened over the past couple of days. The latest was reported on Main Street in Fairfield around 613 last night. Police say 85 year old Gerald Longstreet of Fairfield was crossing Main Street near the village market when he was struck by a car. He was rushed to a hospital where he was pronounced dead a short time later. Police say 61 year old Derek Goodwin of China didn't see Longstreet in the roadway until it was too late. They say Longstreet was wearing dark clothing and the lighting and weather conditions made it very difficult to see. An investigation is now underway, but authorities don't expect any charges will be filed in the case. Meanwhile, one person was killed Thursday following a crash in the town of Lymington. State police say it was around 354 Thursday when they responded to a single vehicle accident on Secaucus Avenue. They say it appears 36-year-old Bobby Goodwin of Hiram was driving south when she crossed the center line and went off the left side of the road where she struck a tree. Life-saving measures were conducted on scene, but Goodwin could not be saved. Police say Goodwin was alone at the time of the crash, which remains under investigation. Police also investigating a deadly crash in the town of China this week that killed a woman and left another person seriously injured. It happened just after 4 o'clock Wednesday afternoon on Maple Ridge Road. Witnesses say they saw the Jeep Grand Cherokee as it went off the road and crashed into a tree. The Kennebec County Sheriff's Office says 22-year-old Faith Pomerlo of Winslow died at the scene. The passenger, who is a 20-year-old resident of Winslow, was taken to a hospital with serious injuries. The Sheriff's Office says that speed and alcohol appears to be factors in that crash. Well, the Hope House in Bangor could be closing by next October if a new partner isn't found. PCHC, Penobscot Community Health Care, has been running that shelter for nearly 13 years now since taking it over from Acadia Hospital in 2011. The Hope House offers a variety of services, including health care for the homeless, mental health services, and transitional housing. Penobscot Community Health Care President Lori Dwyer made the announcement saying the organization is actively looking for a partner while navigating the challenges of finding more funding. We wanted to give ourselves enough of a runway to be able to really have those important conversations and, and work really hard to identify additional funding sources because obviously a partner organization is going to have similar challenges to us. 
Well, Dreyer says funding has always been an issue, but the need has been growing rapidly. Should the Hope House close, Dwyer says the health care and trans transitional housing for the homeless will remain operational under PCHC. Dwyer says conversations with potential partners have gone well so far, and she remains optimistic that the shelter will continue to be open for the foreseeable future. Upon finding its new partner, PCHC will continue to operate the transitional housing part of the campus, while the new partner will assume the daily operations of the Hope House. All right, well, coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, we'll hear about an effort to find a new partner. Uh, well, we just told you about that. We will tell you about local COVID cases that are on the rise. That's what we'll be doing. A lot of COVID cases being reported every week in Maine. More local news when we come back. Do you have a wet basement, nasty crawl space, settling foundation, sinking concrete, or clogged gutters? I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems, all things basementy. For over 30 years, thousands of homeowners throughout Maine and southeastern New Hampshire have trusted TC Hafford. Basement waterproofing, crawl space repair, stabilizing foundations, concrete leveling, and gutter installation. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems for all things basementy. Luna Family Auto Sales is a locally owned business run by a husband and wife team. Here at Luna Family Auto Sales, we combine our passion for cars with providing service to the community and local economy. Featuring no dock or hidden fees at all, we offer financing for all credit types and service everything we sell. Check out our website at lunafamilyautosales.com. Or come in and say hi, we'd love to meet you and introduce ourselves. Luna Family Auto Sales, 649 Stillwater Ave, Old Town. Because I have both Medicaid and Medicare, I got a special Medicare Advantage plan from WellCare. It's called DSNP. That's D-S-N-P. And it stands for Dual Eligible Special Needs Plan. Ah, uh, my grandson, it's my boy. Hey, Grandma. And a WellCare DSNP comes with a whole lot of these. As in WellCare gives me benefits I can use every day. And real human support. And answers I can understand. And I get benefits like $0 copays on prescriptions and a WellCare Spendables debit card to pay for things like dental, utilities, and groceries. I can even use it to pay at the pump for gas. And that means a WellCare DSNP provides what I need when I need it. And that gives me the confidence I need to get through every day. The coverage you need and more. Call or visit wellcareyes.com to see if you qualify for more benefits. Happy Holidays from Color Concepts in Bangor, your local decorating headquarters. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all our friends, customers, and everyone from McCusick Petroleum. Happy Holidays from Eli Rack, Knickknack, and Tack. Visit us with all your gift giving. Something for everyone. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. With power largely restored, other restoration efforts now continue around the state, including road repairs. Our Matthew Jaroncic caught up with the main DOT in Milo to learn more. It's been a little over a week since last Monday's storm tore through Maine and wrecked havoc statewide. And while some communities are getting back to normal, some are still waiting for some of the larger projects to be addressed. So we're up here um, on um, Patty Hill Road up here in uh, Milo Medford area. Um, we are working on fixing a culvert washout. According to Seklich, last Monday's storm rose water levels surrounding Joe Raymond Road high enough to wash out the road entirely. As the water started to recede, we found that the pavement had settled and that the gravel had undermined underneath the pavement and washed away with the receding water and it looked like a roller coaster. Maine DOT and independent contractors worked quickly to tear off the remaining gravel and smooth out the road. Restoration efforts have been progressing slowly, but that doesn't take into account the other hats DOT workers have also had to wear. Salting roads, using the same trucks to do both jobs, so we got to constantly hook and unhook. Um, have trucks loaded and stuff ready if stuff freezes up. We try to get out of here with time to get everything ready for possible 
snow and ice at night. As DOT efforts like this continue, Seklich says the hardest thing to deal with isn't water damage, washouts, nor tree damage. Getting contractors and our, our partnering contractors, our, our partnering vendors, getting the equipment necessary, the materials necessary, because this is not the typical time of year that we are looking for those things. Seklich says she anticipates Joe Raymond Road to be open as early as next week to the public. In Milo, Matthew Jaronsic, ABC7, and Fox 22 News. Over the past week, we've been checking in with the experts to see what their prognosis is for the flu season. As we all remember, a few years ago, holidays and the New Year get-togethers triggered super spreader events in our area. The main CDC now reports in the week beginning <laughs> December 17th, there were five <laughs> COVID deaths, 96 patients, along with 14 of those who had to be put into critical care. And that's before everyone got together for Christmas. We got the chance to talk with a doctor with Northern Light Primary Care yesterday, and her message seems to be one of responsibility with increased <laughs> vigilance as we navigate our way through the next few months. For myself and for my own patients, this time of year, it's never a bad idea to put the masks on. It's, um, you know, with everyone going indoors, mixing patterns being different and the incidence of respiratory disease being elevated, you know, it's it's a good idea to protect yourself with a mask whenever possible. Crane also wants to remind us that it's important to keep your vaccines up to date and there's also a new RSV vaccine out there. So check with your primary care physician to make sure you are up to date. All kinds of illnesses going around right now. Well, most people know where the presents go after Christmas Day, but what about the wrapping paper and Christmas trees? Here in Bangor, the Department of Public Works has the answer. For Bangor residents only, starting on Tuesday, January 2nd, everything from wrapping paper to bows and other Christmas items can be delivered to the Public Works VAC entrance free of charge. They'll take care of everything. For Christmas trees, the department will begin street side pickups also on January 2nd. There will be signs up showing you where to go. We'll have somebody on duty out there the entire time. Uh, they'll be encouraging you to separate out your cardboard from your trash so that the cardboard can be recycled. Angor Public Works is offering this service through January 8th at their 530 Main Avenue location from 7 a.m. until sunset. It's also important to note that wreaths should go in with your regular trash and not with your Christmas trees. We're trying to keep all those bulbs and other things from getting mixed up with the trees, which I believe they're going to turn into mulch and then use it around the city. All right, when we come back, a full look at your weekend weather forecast, along with the latest on the Israeli-Hamas war. Don't go away. Feeling sluggish or weighed down could be a sign that your digestive system isn't at its best. But a little Metamucil every day can help. Metamucil psyllium fiber gels to trap and remove the waste that weighs you down and also helps lower cholesterol and slows sugar absorption to promote healthy blood sugar levels. So you can feel lighter and more energetic. Lighten every day the Metamucil way. And for a delicious way to promote digestive health, try Metamucil Fiber Thins. Great Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. Luna Family Auto Sales is a locally owned business run by a husband and wife team. Here at Luna Family Auto Sales, we combine our passion for cars with providing service to the community and local economy. Featuring no dock or hidden fees at all, we offer financing for all credit types and service everything we sell. Check out our website at lunafamilyautosales.com. Or come in and say hi, we'd love to meet you and introduce ourselves. Luna Family Auto Sales, 649 Stillwater Ave, Old Town. Of course you're doing well. You're here on Wheel of Fortune. Let's go win some money. These contestants are going places. We're sending you to Aruba. Oh! Italy, Scandinavia. Oh! They're moving and shaking. Let's go. We could try to make it look a little harder. <laughs> and getting it done. Can't you get one more? Yes. Oh! Oh! Yes. Here on Wheel. The perfect place to be. And this is it, right? We're right here. Weekdays at 7 on ABC7. Not gonna want to miss this. Jeopardy. 
of like the Everest of trivia. Spit and truth there. You gotta feel smart. If you wanna look smart, get smart, be smart, think smart, talk smart, get smart. You are smart, smarty pants. What is equus? Nitroglycerin. Avignon. Hyperglycemia. You got revenge on that category. Oh, I sure did. You gotta unleash the power. Woo! That's the path to Jeopardy success. You know, I like that, yeah. Yeah. This week at 7.30, only on ABC7. Back, everyone. Israeli military forces continue expanding their ground operations deeper into the Gaza Strip. With heavy combat ongoing in the north, troops are also amplifying their strikes across central and southern Gaza. IDF officials say fighting is expected to rage on for several more months until they achieve their goal of eliminating the Hamas terror group from the region. Fox News correspondent Marianne Rafferty reports on the latest. Almost four months into the Israel-Hamas war and more than 100 hostages taken from Israel during the terror group's deadly incursion on October 7th are still in captivity. <laughs> As outrage grows, protesters continue gathering across Israel, demanding the government do more to secure their release. <laughs> We are here to protest for our hostages to come back as quickly as possible and to show the youth strength and to raise our voices. Egyptian officials recently proposed a plan that, if agreed to, would result in another limited ceasefire, where dozens of additional Israeli hostages would be freed in exchange for more than 100 Palestinians held in Israeli prisons. It's similar to the last temporary ceasefire deal, which ended earlier this month. But as IDF troops continue destroying Hamas infrastructure across the Gaza Strip, their blasts are also driving up the civilian death toll. <laughs> Hamas officials say they are only interested in a permanent stop to the war, and only then would the remaining hostages be freed. We first confirm the movement's openness to any ideas or proposals to completely and definitively stop the aggression against our people in the Gaza Strip. Our people do not want a temporary cessation, but rather a complete cessation of the aggression. But as IDF troops target Hamas deeper into southern Gaza, Israel says it won't stop until the militants are wiped out from the region. Marianne Rafferty, Fox News. All right, let's switch gears now and talk about the weekend weather forecast. A lot of people have big plans for New Year's Eve, and it looks like this messy weather will move out in time for a nice New Year's Eve. Won't be too cold either, maybe down into the 20s. Some years it's been below zero. Um, and in case you haven't heard yet, they're doing the ball drop a little different this year. They usually drop it from Patty Murphy's in downtown Bangor, where they're going to move it to a different location over to the new Wabinaki, Wabinaki facility over at the corner of Hammond and uh, Central Street. So you can go over there. Just part of a whole day day full of uh, activities that downtown Bangor has planned to celebrate New Year's Eve. And again, the weather's looking pretty good for it. Let's turn things over to Devin Biggs for more. Today's full weather forecast is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. All right, we did have a winter weather advisory up earlier this morning that got dropped at around 10 a.m. as we're, we're going to keep switching over from this freezing rain and regular rain that wind should mix over a little bit of snow that will be arriving soon. We have a small crowd advisory that is also up until around midnight as we head towards your Saturday as, of course, actors surf will be expected in those areas. We do have a little bit of fog that's also snuck in a few areas as well, reducing visibility. We're going to work on switching over to snow coming up soon, which will also help to reduce our visibilities moving forward. But the radar is mainly showing rain and that pink on there, which is a windshield mix, possibly a freezing rain falling. We also have a little bit of, of a blue showing up in the northern parts of the states with some snow falling as well. We're going to work on seeing us turning over to more white as we do move forward in time. Say we have the system to the north, another system right about in here, and that's helping to get the Pacific going. We'll be watching for this wintry mix to switch over to mainly rain and snow coming up later today in the parts of tonight. But wave fights are active out there at around 7 to 10 feet. So active out there at least for the time being. We're going to keep that going at least until tomorrow before things begin to improve slowly but surely. But future cast moving forward though, here's that wintry mix on the way. We're going to be switching over to more snow during the afternoon period. We'll have a few breaks from time to time as well by later on this evening. But overnight in the parts of Saturday, we'll be watching for even more rain and snow that will be moving on in. It's Sunday 
right where we catch the break as everything begins to get out of here. It'll be a nice way to wrap up the new year. But otherwise, though, as we get into things, though, we're going to be watching for maybe another, uh, maybe less than a half an inch of rain in some spots before we're all finished up. This is additional rainfall, maybe melted down snow as well that we could possibly see before we're all finished up. There's still a decent amount of water on the way overall. But as we head towards the snowfall side of things, though, at around three to maybe four inches of snow possible in a few areas before we're all finished up to the north. But otherwise, though, some other spots we'll see around one to two inches. So nothing significant on the way, but maybe just enough to cause a few travel headaches. Average high temperature is 31 degrees, middle 30s today, upper 30s Saturday and Sunday, lower 30s Monday. Well, then we're back in the 30s again Tuesday, Wednesday, and also in your Thursday. For today, rain, freezing rain, sleet and snow with highs in the mid 30s. The north wind getting up to about five to 10 miles per hour. By tonight, lower 30s, more rain and snow on the way, maybe a few breaks as well. And that east wind getting up to about five miles per hour. Tomorrow, more rain and snow again, highs in the upper 30s. That northwest wind getting up to about five to 10 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at extended forecast brought to you by Healing Hands Massage. A party cloudy on New Year's Eve, highs in the upper 30s, lower 30s, New Year's Day party cloudy, and party cloudy Tuesday, highs in the mid 30s. Have a happy new year. Did you know 80% of women are struggling with hair damage? Dryness and frizz that keeps coming back could be damaged hair that can't retain moisture. You need Pantene's Miracle Rescue Deep Conditioner. It's filled with provitamins to help hair lock in moisture, visibly repairing six months of damage in just one use with no way down. Guaranteed or your money back for hair that looks healthy and stays healthy. If you know, you know it's Pantene. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Is it feeling a little crowded to you? The world's population is growing as we approach the new year. The U.S. Census Bureau says the world population grew by 75 million people in 2023. And by New Year's Day, it will reach more than 8 million people, or 8 billion rather. The world growth rate is just under 1%, according to the latest numbers released on Thursday. In just the U.S., 1.7 million people were born, putting the country's population on January 1st at 335.8 million people. Overall, the current pace of growth in the 2020s is on track to be one of the slowest growing decades in U.S. history. Right now, the slowest growing decade stands in the 1930s, right after the Great Depression, when the growth rate was at 7.3%. And finally, a new study finds health benefits for elderly people who own pets, especially in stopping one kind of decline. The Chinese study published by the Journal of American Medical Association's network opened, uh, found slower cognitive decline in elderly people who live alone and own a pet. Pet ownership among the group can also aid uh, verbal memory and fluency. The study included about 8,000 people in all. So one more reason to get a pet if you don't have one already. That'll do it for now, folks. We thank you so much for joining us. Hope you have a great weekend and a wonderful new year.